The Los Angeles Lakers began the defense of their NBA title in fine form by sweeping the San Antonio Spurs. Next in line was Utah, but the Jazz posed no problem in game one as the Lakers steamrolled to an easy victory. The defending champs seemed intent on ending the series quickly. However, the Utah Jazz weren't ready to call it quits. Led by John Stockton and Carl Malone, they outplayed the heavily favored Lakers in game two to tie the series and then returned home where they continue to dominate. Relying on a tenacious defense, Utah frazzled the champions to take a shocking 2-1 to series lead. Today, the eyes of the basketball world are on Salt Lake City, where the world champion Lakers are on the ropes against the fired-up underdogs from Utah. Welcome to CBS Sports continuing coverage of the NBA playoffs. And we have a big one this afternoon from the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City. Game four of the Western semifinal between the defending world champion Los Angeles Lakers and the team that they trail, the Utah Jazz, two games to one. The winner of this series will face the survivor of Denver and Dallas with Denver leading two to one, and they play game four tonight. And good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. This is, without question, the most important game the world champion Lakers have played all year. And vivid in their memories is the 1986 disaster against Houston when they won the first game against the Rockets and then lost four straight. They do not want a repeat of that terrible series. Billy Cunningham, we've talked a lot about what the Lakers need to do. Is Pat Riley pressing the right buttons, and what kind of buttons are they today? Well, the buttons aren't X's and O's for Pat Riley. As a matter of fact, he called off practice yesterday and had a meeting. It's all up here. And how is the Laker team going to come out? Are they going to be nasty? Are they going to be aggressive? And the man that's got to carry this team and get them going is Ma Magic Johnson. A.C. Green is going to start for the Lakers. Back in the starting lineup. The crowd is going wild. It's the Jazz and the Lakers. If you own a house, you gotta own a shop vac. This baby's got the power to pick up almost anything. Got broken glass nails or wood chips? The shop vac gobbles up stuff that would kill an ordinary vacuum. Uh, and a shop vac wet dry can even vacuum water like a flooded baby. The washing machine is flooding the house. No. Uh, Every house needs a shop vac. Starting at under $50, a shop vac is heavy duty, not heavy money. And remember, if it doesn't say shop vac, keep shopping. In North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Then the final critical step, the Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Ship it. In a battle drill, you need horsepower, firepower, people power, teamwork. The temperature's rising, and nothing beats the heat better than an ice-cold, great-tasting Miller High Life, Miller Lite, or Miller Genuine Draft. So make sure you stock up now, because it's getting awfully warm out there. And look for Miller's triple take offer. We've got a deal on a cooler that's... Soar beyond your expectations. Today, the Prudential can show you a new world of financial opportunities. Look to the rock for stocks and bonds, mutual funds. Feel its strength in CDs, insurance, and mortgages. With the right choices, the right guidance, you can move mountains. The Prudential, your rock in financial services. A.C. Green in his first start since March the 19th at Power Forward. There's the Laker lineup. Carl Malone, Mark Ivoroni, Mark Eaton, John Stockton, and Bob Hansen, the starting five for the Jazz. Jake O'Donnell and Dick Bavetta are the officials. Tommy Nunez is the alternate. The Lakers trail two games to one. They have not trailed in a playoff series since the loss to Houston in 86. And they're going to jump it again. Are the Lakers a bit tense? And L.A. 
control. So Pat Riley moves Green back in mostly because of the quickness. He says, we've got to get a quick team out there. Rambis did a good job when he started, but we need A.C. Green, and the foul against the Utah Jazz starts it out 11 seconds into the game, and it's against Eaton. Well, that would be a dream come true for Pat Riley if he could get Mark Eaton in foul trouble because this Utah team is basically a five-man ball club, and he has to play close to 48 minutes for them to win this ball game. And he doesn't mind playing them that way. He says fatigue's a matter of the mind, and they don't want to come out. Kareem going inside and gets the first basket. Gives you an idea. He was been 6 for 27 in his last two games. Normally, he comes up big in the big ones. In game three of this series, they did go to Jabbar early, but he wasn't able to convert. Here we see him getting right off to a good start. John Stockton ties the score. And we notice the first possession for the Jazz that the Lakers have made a defensive switch. Magic Johnson is guarding John Stockton. Worthy is fouled by Ivoroni. Inside, Mark Ivoroni, who played and started for you when you won the title with the Sixers in 83. And they asked Mark Ivoroni to come in here and be a role player, be physical, play the good defense, and get on the boards. But what we've seen, as you mentioned, Dick, the adjustment with Magic Johnson playing Stockton, that 6'9 against 6'1 height-wise, Pat Riley feels that will make it difficult to, for him to see and make those good passes. James Worthy did not take a shot in the first half the other night. He was held under double figures for only the second time ever in the playoffs, and you wonder about the tendonitis on the knee and how much it slows him down. Well, I think it slows him down and hurts him anytime he has to explode and go to the basket strong. Stockton and Hanson are the guards. There's Carl Malone guarded by Green, isolated. And Carl Malone hits the first shot. The mailman has scored 29 points in each of the first three games of the series. Well, he has truly emerged to be a star in this league, both offensively and defensively. Again into Kareem. Hanson doubles. Trying to get Eaton into foul trouble and get Kareem underway. And Abdul-Jabbar hits his second shot. Well, you know Kareem was very upset with his performance the, first, the last two games, shooting just about 30% from the field. And you knew what a competitor he is. He's going to come out with fire in his eyes. 11 on the shot clock. Baseline pass. Now Ivoroni picked up by Worthy. Anything they get from Ivoroni, bonus. Loose ball. Malone. Foul. Kareem. Let's see if it's Kareem or A.C. Green on the foul. Now here's the loose ball. Carl Malone getting it. And what he does so well is he goes to the basket so strong. He never tries to avoid anyone. He tries to go through them or over them. The foul was on A.C. Green, the first Laker foul. And here's Carl Malone, who played all 48 minutes of Friday's game three. First time in his career he played the limit. An intimidating presence, a bruiser. He can beat you inside or outside. And he plays on emotion. You'll see as the game progresses, you know, how when he makes a great play, he, the, he really gets into it with the crowd. Long pass to Worthy. Worthy from Magic Johnson. Well, right off the bat, we see the last two possessions. The Lakers, Magic Johnson just pushing the ball down the court. In their last ball game, they only had four points out of their fast break, and they're running after misses and makes today. Lakers by three. They were listless when they started out game three. Far cry. Double on Malone. Stockton misses a two, and Eaton clears it. Bob Hansen, the other guard in the lane. Good touch over Kareem. Well, that is an area that usually hurts Utah. Now they're hurting L.A. on the glass. The Lakers have dominated the offensive boards throughout these first three games, despite the fact they trail. Kareem goes baseline, blocked by Malone, and here come the Jazz, John Stockton. Malone, clobbered and hits the floor hard, and A.C. Green. Well, what happened is the two collided near midcourt, and Malone pushed A.C. Green and then A.C. Green, and I think that was a bad foul by A.C. Green. He just pushed him there. If anything, he should have grabbed him and made sure he didn't fall that hard. Now watch Kareem making a strong move to the baseline in this. Carl Malone getting a piece of the basketball, and they're off and running. Earl Bailey has come into the ball game early for the Utah Jazz. Malone appears to be all right, and with that build, you would expect it. There's Bailey, though who, along with Roy Tarpley, the best sixth men in the NBA this year. Malone, who's improved in many areas, including on the free throw line in his career. 
So Thurl Bailey, who gives Frank Layden a great scoring threat, comes in for Mark Ivoroni early here with 9.24 to go in the first. Well, one thing we know for sure, this game is going to get very physical. After that contact between A.C. Green and Malone, Malone, I'm sure, at some point is going to try and retaliate maybe with A.C. Green no underneath the basket. And it won't happen. Malone ties it up. Well, we hear Jake O'Donnell letting the players know that he is just not going to tolerate anything like this and allow this game to get out of hand and possibly a fight. Malone could give the Lakers, the Utah Jazz, their first lead of the ball game. And he doesn't. Rebound by Green, so we're still tied. Utah Jazz at 3-0 at home in the playoffs. They're the only unbeaten team at home in the Western Conference in postseason play. Kareem gets good position inside and is fouled. That foul was on Thurl Bailey. I'm sure pa Frank Layton's very happy that that wasn't the second on Mark Eaton. Well, what we see is the Lakers coming down, looking to go inside to Kareem offensively, looking to get him going offensively and challenge Mark Eaton. Kareem has been outscored and out-rebounded in the last game by Eaton. This is one of his last chances at a world title. And the Lakers realize that if they don't repeat this year with Kareem in the lineup, it'll get slimmer the year after he leaves. He plans to play next year as well. They double-team Bailey, Stockton, Malone outside, short. Kareem the rebound. Lakers by one, under nine minutes to go, and Stockton nearly stole that one. Five on four here, Byron Scott. Rebound by Malone. Here come the Jazz. They push it up quickly. Bailey, a tough matchup. Offensive foul and a good call by Dick Pavetta. And that's the second personal against Thurl Bailey. There was a case where Thurl Bailey, who's such a good perimeter shooter, should have just pulled up and looked for the jump shot. And Frank Layden is upset at the two fouls and now must bring Mark Ivoroni back in the game, which could play into the Laker hands. Worthy has it deflected, Eaton, and now Stockton has it. So it was Eaton who made that play, and now a palming violation called against John Stockton. Ivoroni back in, and Bailey goes out with two personal fouls. Bailey has been a 20-point score off the bench. As Billy mentioned, Ivoroni is in there to be a bruiser and a rebounder, but not an offensive threat. And now he's, he might have to contribute a little bit more offensively now with Thurl Bailey out of the game because the offense, now when you look at this ball club in Utah, is Stockton and Malone. And an illegal defense has been called against the Utah Jazz after the second game of the series. Pat Riley complained that the Jazz were guilty of uh, some 17 or 21 illegal defense call there's the series thus far but Frank Layton said how about the illegal defenses of the, of the LA Lakers and I think Johnson misses a hook in the lane Hanson the rebound so the Jazz looking to take the lead for the first time Eaton free fouled by Kareem his first there was nothing Kareem could do uh, it's just a good, good decision by Mark Ivoroni finding Eaton on the weak side. Kareem was more concerned with Carl Malone posted up. Michael Thompson, who has played a big role off the bench for the Lakers and will probably play a lot of minutes today. Mark Eaton out of UCLA at 7-4, a giant among giants in this series. Sometimes he sets a pick. It looks like double picks the way he does it with his bulk. Good free throw shooter. Eaton is now 10 for 10 in the series. And the Jazz have the lead for the first time. Byron Scott misses his second shot. Kareem gets the loose ball. Crowd wanted traveling. Jake O'Donnell said no. Scott trying to get underway. Hits the shot. Byron Scott kept the Lakers in the game the other night with 29 points. And that was a playoff career high for, for, for Scott. He has been a blistering scorer. Hanson gets free from Stockton. 
taking advantage of back picks, picks inside, and the Jazz lead by one again. But the interesting thing is he threw that right over Magic Johnson, and that was the reason that he's on that on a Stockton to try and make that pass difficult. Worthy against Ivoroni, plays it well. Out of bounds, still Lakers ball. The Lakers won the regular season, winning four games to one, and in the one game the Jazz won, Magic wasn't in, and the Lakers weren't at full strength. But this is the playoffs, and it's a different story. Can you American Express? My daughter and I just had an accident. Do you need a doctor? I think she's got a broken wrist. That was some trip. I'd like to keep this while you're away at school. Sure. I've got something for you. It's got my name on it. Just in case. Thank you. Someone who cares when you're far from home. Membership has its privileges. Now the final chapter, students, in Bosworth's book of etiquette, personal hygiene. I suggest the maximum protection of new right guard sports stick from Gillette, antiperspirant and deodorant. Anything less would be uncivilized. The new Black & Decker push-button weed trimmer versus this conventional trimmer. Only Black & Decker has a push-button that lets out line for continuous cutting, no bumping. While the conventional trimmer makes a better sweater, Black & Decker makes an easier-to-use trimmer. Right now, the only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filtered one. Yeah, if you want a beer whose real draft taste hasn't been changed by heat pasteurization, we've got it down cold. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as CBS Sports coverage of the 1988 NBA playoffs is sponsored by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Centers. Castrol, the motor oil engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Big Shavers, feel the big difference. Big Shaver for regular or sensitive skin. A key adjustment for Pat Riley was putting Magic Johnson on John Stockton to make it difficult for him to see the court. But right here we see Magic Johnson. Where are his hands? Down by his knees. And he can't defend it defensively that way. And we'll see the next part is the great screen set here by Mark Ivoroni, freeing Bob Hanson for the easy layup. And a good pass. 6.55 remaining in the first period. James Worthy from the corner. Kareem with the offensive rebound. Goes outside and hits the hook, so Kareem with seven points. They're underway in Detroit, where the Pistons take a 2-1 to lead against the Chicago Bulls, and have moved out early. Magic on Stockton, and his hands are down, and now an illegal defense has been called against the Lakers, so each team has been called for one. So the next time, we'll get technical fouls on the guilty team. Here's Pat Riley. Salt Lake City has been a critical scene for him. Last year, the Lakers were embarrassed here, and he threw one of his few tantrums and got the team straightened out. And once again, he's in a tough spot here in Salt Lake. And a foul away from the ball against the Lakers. Byron Scott with the elbow. Fourth team foul against the Lakers. The Jazz have three. Malone will inbound for the Jazz, who were 33 and 8 at home this year. Very tough place to play here in the Salt Palace. Oh, the, the fans have really responded to this ball club this year. They, they've sold out 39 out of 41 games. Eaton inside. And now an illegal defense called against Byron Scott of the Lakers, who wasn't guarding anyone. And that'll be a technical foul, and the Jazz will shoot. It's kind of funny looking at Pat Riley after game two. He was the one complaining about the illegal defense, and we see the Jazz now shooting a, shooting a, a free throw here because they were illegal. Now, now, the key man is Byron Scott, who's standing right at the foul line. He is in a legal position defensively. Tied at 13. Magic still with his arms down against Stockton. Not taking full advantage of the 6'9 height. Malone. Outside, Carl Malone. 
Fourth in rebounding, fifth in scoring in the NBA. And second team all defense this year in the NBA. Don't forget that. 15-13 Jazz. Magic goes back and it's stolen by Stockton. He's got Hanson. Malone was there. Carl Malone, the trailer. Good hustle by Malone and the Jazz lead by four. Biggest lead for Utah, five and a half to play, opening period. Worthy blocked by Eaton and a foul called. It's on Hanson. So Eaton still with only one personal foul and Hanson's first. Fourth team foul by the Jazz. And we see John Stockton just stepping into the passing lane. And the big key is Carl Malone does not just give up on this play and feel Hanson's going to get the easy two. He's there for the tap-in. James Worthy on the line. Worthy got into foul trouble in the last game. He was 0-for-0 zero zero in shooting in the first half. And Magic Johnson didn't get a rebound in the entire game. Those are unusual numbers for the Lakers. And the interesting thing so far in this game is the Lakers have come to play. They're playing with that intensity that made them world champions. But this Utah team has responded. Two-point Utah lead. Stockton looking inside. Hanson posting up Byron Scott. Now they switch Malone. Green denies well. Hanson breaks out of a pack. Malone. Driving Hanson to Eaton. Great passing by the Utah Jazz, and they're a patient team. Billy, it looks like this club has been in the playoffs for five years, the way they are poised is showing up. Well, the Lakers have allowed this team to build confidence in themselves over the last two games, and they now don't have any respect for the, for the Lakers. Worthy comes back to quiet the crowd somewhat, but Stockton quickly to the forecourt for Utah. They don't waste much time, although they like to use the clock here. They'll look to get it down the court quickly, even after makes it. They have the open shot, they'll take it. Otherwise, they'll use a lot of that 24-second clock. Veroni gets it to Eaton. Kareem the rebound. Four rebounds for Kareem. He has seven points. Worthy leads the Lakers, and now he has ten. James Worthy, the first player in double figures in the ball game, ties it at 19. Pistons and the Bulls underway in the first period, with Detroit leading that series two games to one. Now under four minutes to go, first period. Stockton given some room. Carries it. John Stockton, tremendous shooter during the year from outside. And the Lakers turn it over. You're right, he's got over 57% from the field this year. And, and the problem when you play him, do you get up and pressure him? If you do that, he drives by you, or you have to give up the jump shot. Unusual substitution for the Jazz, Ricky Green, who has disappeared. He had not been coming off the bench, has come in replacing John Stockton at guard. And for the Lakers, Michael Thompson is in for A.C. Green. Malone is doubled. Throws an air ball, and Eaton is there to follow it up, and a foul as well. Kareem picks up his second foul. If Mark Eaton converts this foul shot, there will be eight points that Utah has scored off the offensive glass against the Lakers. As well, Paul Malone will tell Eaton after the game, how'd you like my pass? <laughs> <laughs> he had to make it real fine. Eaton perfect from the series from the line. 11 for 11 and a five-point lead for the Jazz. 3.21 to go, timeout, L.A. AT&T, I don't believe it. Their PCs match the specs better. Better than who? IBM, Compaq, you name it. I can hang 32 terminals off just one PC. You're still blowing your budget on standalone. Listen, you sound like a commercial. You listen, these are facts. committed to total efficiency.
a machine that provides clock-like precision. A machine designed for maximum dependability. With the best on-time arrival record of the nine largest domestic airlines. American Airlines, the on-time machine. Good time. 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Great taste. Coca-Cola, cool, and the fries hot. Good time. Real food, good food every time. Next time. Take a little break of the best kind. Good time. America's favorite pasta-loving, Emmy-winning fat cat is having a birthday. Creator Jim Davis takes you through 10 years of what has made this feisty feline a comedy hit. Happy birthday, Garfield, Tuesday. Biggest lead of the ball game for the Jazz and the concern etched on the face of Magic Johnson. The Utah Jazz playing crisp basketball. Eaton is doing it defensively, but how about offensively? Well, offensively, again, an offensive rebound. And watch the ball movement here. Bob Hansen drawing Kareem over for the easy two for Mark Eaton. Ricky Green, who's not had much enthusiasm for playing, he lost his starting job to John Stockton. And Eddie Hughes, who came out of the Colorado Youth Center, had been the backup point guard. But Ricky Green is there. He's guarding Scott, and Scott hits the jumper. Kurt Rambis has also come into the ball game for the Lakers as their front line has done the bulk of the scoring. In fact, only three players have done the scoring for the Lakers all the way around. Utah's had good balance. Malone, all the way hits, doesn't matter. Carl Malone with 10 points. And goaltending charged Malone, batted the ball away, and the basket is given to Magic Johnson. Or Worthy. Worthy gets the basket. Well, that was a good call by the official. That was goaltending, and Utah is going to have to do a better job getting back defensively against the Lakers after they score. Thompson knocks the ball away from Carl Malone. Good defense by Michael. Worthy throws it into the hands of Ricky Green. And the reason was Mark Eaton. Green drives. Malone, follow up. Crashes the boards for the second time, and the Jazz are up again by five. The guy is everywhere. He scores at the other end of the court. He's back goaltending a shot. Two missed shots now. He's been able to knock in for two points off fast breaks. And a quick foul against Magic Johnson. They doubled him as soon as he put it on the floor. 15 foul against Utah. And again, the key is that Carl Malone does not expect the shot to go in. That's his attitude, and he's there for the easy two. The foul is on Ivoroni, his second personal foul. Utah, for a change, leading in the offensive rebounding department as John Stockton returns to the lineup for the Utah Jazz. Hansen goes out. Mark Kofod also checks in for the Utah Jazz. Kofod, a backup guard out of Kearney State in Nebraska, a 6'5 rookie free agent who's a tough defensive player. Two minutes Under two minutes to go. There's the L.A. trap shown for the first time. Yep, going to that 1-3-1 one, one trap. And a legal defense called against the Lakers. That's the third one. Pat Riley was upset at his team, not at the officials, on that call. Well, Kurt Rampus was out of position, and the players are talking to each other, trying to get organized. And you'll see right in the middle of your picture at the foul line, Kurt, Ramp Kurt Rampus is in the wrong spot. John Stockton flicks. Rambus has not been that effective playing with the second unit. Coming off the bench, he played very well as a starter. He started to begin in the games when Magic and Cooper went out with injury, but basically he's got the starting unit with him here. He's got the starting unit, and he plays well when the stars play well, and that's Magic Johnson, Worthy, and Kareem. Then his role is very effective. Jazz by four. Rambus with a tough job of defending Malone. Kofo, this is a jumper. Rambus. Lakers will try to cut it to two. Magic bump goes in and is fouled. And it's Kofo committing the foul, his first. Both teams in the penalty with a minute and a half remaining in the first period. 
Well, that's something that Magic Johnson has not been doing in the last couple games, is forcing the issue in the breaking situation. Even if the team's back defensively, he has that great ability to get into the lane and either score himself or find the open man. Michael Cooper is at the scorer's table, and he'll relieve Magic Johnson at the next dead ball. So Magic, who is the undisputed key for the Lakers. Mitzi hasn't been that aggressive. And has not been in 100% condition with the groin injury. But Yeah, he says that that groin from one day to the next could be, give him no problems or a lot of problems. Ivoroni couldn't draw the foul, and Michael Thompson, good defense by James Worthy that time. Stockton knocks it away, but it's still Lakers' ball. And Michael Cooper will come in for Magic Johnson. Cooper has regained his shooting eye in the series. He has hit 10 of 17 shots. And over and back called against Cooper. Stockton was all over him, and another turnover. It's that defensive pressure that John Stockton can apply, and especially when you're coming off the bench, you've been sitting over there for 20 minutes, and you're not really into the ball game. Those things can happen. One minute remaining in the first period. The Jazz lead by two. Lakers led by three early. Utah up by five on two occasions. And Carl Malone. Yeah, Carl Malone was trying to get to that post-up position. He just ran right up the back of uh, Kurt Rambis. And Dick Pavetta called the foul. First on Malone. There's the time remaining in the first period. Utah's going to the bench as much as the Lakers have. Worthy turnaround is short. Kofo quickly to Stockton. They know how to find him in a hurry, and he makes himself available. 16 on the shot clock. Ivoroni finds Malone inside, blocked by Michael Thompson. Here are the Lakers, three on two. Scott fakes Stockton, tipped up and in by Worthy. James Worthy now with 14 points is the game high score. Well, you just can see why this team, the Lakers, even though they, it's a tie score now, why they're world champions. They have a bad game like James Worthy did in game number three. But the way he comes back in, in, game, in this ball game where he knows it's so important to his ball club. Worthy has 14 points, not 12. Malone has 12. And Stockton doesn't get the basket, but he'll shoot two with five seconds remaining. Fine pass by Ivoroni, finding Paul Malone, but there's Thompson coming from the weak side with the block. John Stockton, and of course at Jack and Dan's bar in Spokane, Washington, the capacity is 80, but when the Jazz are on national television, I think they exceed that number pretty well. <laughs> I'm sure they do. You know what's amazing statistic about this Laker ball club in this series is they've played now 13 quarters, well, five seconds more. And they've only scored 30 points or more in one quarter. That's hard to believe. That's a story in itself. Final seconds. Worthy goes for three. And misses. So the Jazz have the lead. They have the lead in the series. And they have a slim lead in this game after one period of play. Today's small cars are... CBS Sports coverage of the 1988 NBA playoffs is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America, today Chevrolet. BASF Corporation, the spirit of innovation. And by AC Delco, automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. Utah leading the Lakers 31 to 29 after one period of play. CBS Sports coverage of the 1988 NBA playoffs takes place today from Salt Lake City in Utah. The story of the game, both teams shooting over 50%, the Lakers leading with 53. Those are the high scores. And keep in mind that the Jazz led the NBA in field goal defense, limiting the opposition to only 45%. And the Lakers have shot in three games only 45%. So they have done the defensive job there. Stockton and Hanson at guard for the Jazz. Up front, it's Eaton, Thurl Bailey, and Carl Malone. Bailey has two personal fouls, and Malone misses inside, but it'll be Utah's possession. Lakers have Scott, Cooper, and Magic Johnson. 
And up front, it's Rampus and Michael Thompson. So they're going with a smaller, quicker lineup. Quicker lineup. They'll probably go to a defense where they're denying, uh, denying one pass away to be more aggressive. Bob Hansen stepped out of bounds as he tried to drive the baseline. So the turnover gives it to the Lakers, looking to tie it up. Utah rebounded L.A. 10 to 9 in the first period. Scott coming off the screen, nails it. Byron Scott with six points. He had missed three out of five before that basket. Stockton working against Magic Johnson. Hanson, and before he gets the shot, no basket. Foul is called against the Lakers. And it's against Kurt Rambis. Well, our playoff coverage heats up as it does today and certainly does next week when we'll be with you Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time with a game and next Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern as CBS Sports coverage of the playoffs continues to move along. And, of course, the coverage of the lottery will take place Saturday at halftime. Aaron pass by Stockton trying to get it to Bailey in another turnover. And that's because of the good defense of the Lakers. We see this quicker team defensively is picking it up a notch for them they're denying the passes not allowing them to just make that easy entry pass that they would with Kareem on the court they spread the offense and Scott misses a three Cooper another three-point threat Hanson picking up Magic Johnson Magic goes baseline Eaton got a hand on it Cooper saves it and Scott is over the line the, the, this Jerry Sloan up there pointing, Frank Layden signaling what what play they'd like to run this time. But Mark Eaton's presence, uh, you, you know, he's just so active that time, not blocking a shot, but deflecting a pass. Tied at 31. You know, the Lakers say we should forget about Eaton, just play our game. Hard man to forget about. Stockton, rebound by Michael Thompson. Thompson's had a good rebounding series. He's led with over 10 rebounds a game in this series. Magic feeding Michael Thompson, lost it. Carl Malone might have gotten a hand on it. Here's John Stockton in the distance. And a foul is called, and they're going to count the basket as the ball was trapped against the glass. Goaltending, and Stockton gets two. One area that this Utah team feels they must control is the lane area, and they've been able to clog it throughout this series. And the man that does that is that Mark Eaton. And when you have Carl Malone that you put in there with him, that's a tough area to, for the Lakers to drive through. 9.45 to go in the half. Cooper on a pick and roll and an offensive foul called. Kurt Rambis commits the foul. Timeout. Chevy S10 invites you to own the street with the biggest engine ever offered in a compact pickup. The most V6 power and torque available in a compact truck. And a price to make your heart beat faster than ever. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. Cars aren't cheap, never have been. That's why I never take shortcuts with cheap oil and air filters. Give me AC filters every time. AC filters match the original specs on my cars like a nut on a bolt. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Keep your car running the way it was made to run. Now get up to 780 back on AC filters and plugs. See your retailer for details. I'm State Farm Agent Bill Harrell. Just came from the Harrises. They like the way I keep their homeowner's insurance up to date and help them with claims, too. The Harrises told the Floyds, the Floyds told the Carvels, the Carvels told the Lockmans, and so on. When you deliver good service with homeowner's insurance, like State Farm agents do, word gets around. That's why State Farm insures more homes than anyone else. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Paddle Paddle Brian here in Control Room 43 in New York City. Carl Malone has 12 points as the Jazz lead the Lakers 33-31. We'll get you back to that game in a moment. 
There's another game four going on right now in Chicago, Detroit, and the Bulls. And for a taste of that game, let's send you out there now. And here's Vern Lundquist. Welcome, those of you who've been watching the Lakers and the Utah Jazz. We're at Chicago Stadium. Vern Lundquist along with Hubie Brown. 9.44 to go in the first half of play. The Pistons lead the Bulls 29-24. The lead was at 10 at one point at 20 to 10, but Chicago's come back. Well, Chicago has been struggling from an offensive standpoint. They've been shooting 36 to 38 percent, and that has forced the open transition game, which is Detroit's best action, and they are really hurting them in the open floor. Scotty Pippen leads Chicago with scoring. Here's Corzine, not there. Pippen, who has the ball now with nine points. Adrian Danley, who's on the bench momentarily, has 12 for Detroit. 29-24, 9-12 to go, first half. Detroit leads the series two games to one. Jordan, who is now four of eight from the field, has eight points. But he is getting very good shots today. They are able to get him the basketball as he's coming off the screen in the area, 15 to 17 feet. So he's getting nice shots. Vinny Johnson. And Corzine comes down with it. They got to get the ball out quicker. Out quicker so they can force something off the dribble. Corzine fakes Lambeer, kicks it over to Oakley, who almost loses it. Chicago has Oakley, Paxson, Corzine, Pippen, and Jordan on the floor right now. And it's a steal for Thomas, fouled by John Paxson. Good foul that time by Paxson. It was a bad pass. Uh, but at least he did not allow them to get out on a three-on-one that time in transition. Adrian Danley coming back into the lineup, replacing Rick Mahorn for Detroit. Danley with 10 instead of the 12, I said. And a taste of the game going on in Chicago. Detroit leads 29-24. Detroit is up 2-1 in that series. We're going to send you back to the Salt Palace now as the Jazz and the Los Angeles Lakers are battling it out in game four of that series. Here is the jam-packed Salt Palace in Salt Lake City. The Utah Jazz lead the L.A. Lakers 35-34 with 8.41 remaining in the first half. Thurl Bailey was fouled by Tony Campbell, who's just come in the game for the Lakers. Bailey hit a jumper, and then Michael Cooper answered with a three-point basket for the Lakers. But Thurl Bailey won a national championship at North Carolina State and says the similarities right now are alive between the miracle championship a few years ago and this one for him. I'm sure they are. You know, that was a team, that North Carolina State team, that just built more and more confidence as they went from one step to the next. Magic Johnson gets in the lane over Eaton and scores. The offensive rebounds and what they've translated into points has been a surprise, a change in what yep. we've seen. Yeah, Utah has gotten six for 11 points, whereas the Lakers have four for six points, so a five-point difference. Tony Campbell switches off on Stockton and a steal by Magic. Bailey picks up the loose ball. Four on the shot clock. And a pushing foul against the Lakers. Their third team foul of this second period. The clock was running down. How would you estimate the Lakers have started out much better in this game than they did in the previous two? Oh, they're playing their style of play right now and just getting up and down the court. Magic is taking that leadership and just looking to push it, running the plays, and they're executing well. But the thing that's impressive is that this Utah team has responded to the world champions. Magic picked up his first personal. Stockton gets it low to Malone. Quick release turnaround. And Carl Malone now with 14 points. He is the leading scorer for the Jazz. He has hit 6 of 10 from the field from all over. Tony Campbell fouled. And Thurl Bailey has picked up his third personal foul. So Frank Leighton has got to go to his bench and bring in Mark Ivoroni. Kareem, who had a rest, returns for L.A. Bailey goes out with three personal fouls. He has scored four points. Lakers didn't get any fast break points in game three. And but still, the Lakers are pushing the basketball. And a turnover. Stockton caused it. Four on two break for Utah. Malone. 41 to 36 matches the biggest lead for the Jazz. Cooper working against Stockton. 7.20 remaining in the first half. If anyone thought this would be a Laker breeze because they're the world champions, they have another thought coming. Cooper misses a three. Eaton to Hanson. 
One of the rare occasions that the initial pass didn't go to John Stock. No, it was good defense by the Lakers picking him up as soon as that shot went up. Iveroni looking for Eaton. Kareem has him pushed out pretty far. Five on the clock. Stockton misses a two, but there's Hanson inside. Kareem got a piece of it. But Cooper can't save it, and now they say it's last touched by the Jazz, and it'll be Lakers' ball. Bill Burtka, at Riley's assistant. Again, the offensive glass. The, the Lakers have to do a better job on the boards, and right there, going the other way towards the Lakers. But it's Utah with the lead. They had it after one, and they're still in front. Legends of the NBA. The smooth touch makes it count. Sponsored by Schick. With the game on the line, few men were tougher competitors than JoJo White. White possessed determination, coupled with a gentle touch, knowing how to exploit an opponent's weakness and then burning him for two points. He enjoyed taking the game's decisive shot and was rarely denied the pleasure. For JoJo White thrived on the art of winning. Chic Plus has a lubricating comfort strip to give you a smooth touch, an easy touch that's more comfortable than ever. A touch this easy makes me understand. When it comes to love, I want a slow hand. Chic Plus for the easy touch. Dreaming, dreaming, the dreams of America. Why do so many people choose GMAC financing to get the GM car or truck of their dreams? GMAC makes it easy. You do it all right at your GM dealers. And we make it easy on your budget with rates and terms to fit your needs. Don't just dream about a new GM car or truck. See your GM dealer about GMAC financing. GMAC! Official sponsor of America's Dream. It's considered one of the greatest challenges on the PGA Tour. Many of the year's top money winners compete at the Colonial National Invitation next weekend on CBS Sports. The Jazz leading in game four, and Pat Riley doesn't mince any words as to the Lakers' performance in the previous contest. But I would have to say that in the third game, it might be uh, the worst playoff effort we've ever had as a team, and that stings them, so... Uh, the whole thing today is not about adjustments. Uh, our defense has been pretty good against this team at 45% and out rebounding them by eight and holding them to 98 points. So uh, we have to do all of the little things in between the free throw lines, and uh, it comes down to effort. And yesterday at their team meeting, Pat Riley uh, questioned their heart, uh, this ball club. And that's a tough thing to do for a coach because you just don't know if your team is just going to get upset with you and not respond positively or are they going to come out and play to prove you wrong and i think the lakers have come out to prove pat riley wrong whatever it takes right that's right you can't be worried as a coach if your players like you or dislike you the illegal defense called against the jazz that'll be a technical foul and the lakers will shoot nearly halfway through this second period lakers and the green team fouls, the Jazz won, but the Jazz have a five-point lead. Magic will go to the line. The Lakers' biggest lead was 8-5 to five very early. The game was tied at 19. Utah then scored five in a row, and they led by five. Two other occasions. He was holding on that fly! Frank Layton, a funny man. He wasn't funny just as he yelled that instruction. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you know, I think... There's it up the defensive boards, but I think Frank Layton, too many people perceive him as, well, the clown, he's the court jester. Let me tell you, this man was coach of the year in 1984 and has just done a great job with this ball club. Well, you're just saying that because he's from Brooklyn like you are. No, he, well, to tell you one-liners, he had the one-liner about clothing. Eaton in the net, some move, and a three-point attempt for Mark Eaton. Again, Stockton finding Mark Eaton, and the weak side help too late from, from Thompson, and a possible three-point play for Mark Eaton. Crowd is going wild here 
at the Salt Palace, the Utah Jazz. Looking to take a commanding three to one lead in this best of seven series have now opened up their biggest margin 44 to 37 halfway through the second period. You know they don't look to Mark Eaton to score many points. He's the defensive player. He only averaged he averages under nine points a game during this series. He's got ten right now. Kareem misses a hook. Ivoroni the rebound and they're going to count the basket. Defensive interference or goaltending call and the basket will count and it's credited to Kareem. Now watch, it, this is showing you how physical this is. There's Thompson just pushing Carl Malone out of the way. The official missed it and that cost the Utah Jazz two points. Ivoroni got his hand on it above the cylinder. That was the first Laker basket in three minutes. John Stockton comes back. Talk about balance. Malone has 16, Stockton 12, Eaton has 10. Eaton the rebound on Magic's miss. Seven point lead with 5.20 to go in the first half. Malone, air ball, there's Eaton with the pass again. <laughs> Another great pass by Carl Malone. Hanson, missing a three, Michael Thompson clear. Scott guarded by Stockton. Hanson has been on magic throughout this series. Thompson gets Stockton out of the play with a good pick. Kareem. M Michael Thompson with the offensive board. He had seven in the first half the other night. Scott. Byron Scott makes it a five-point game. We want to welcome the viewers who have been looking in and watching the Pistons and the Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference Game 4. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham are at the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City. The Jazz have led most of the way, and John Stockton is responsible. He has 14 points, the floor general, and the Lakers are in a real battle for their lives right well, now. Well, the key in this game so far is that the Lakers came out with that intensity. They were nasty on the court, but this young Utah Jazz team has responded to the challenge. 22nd timeout called by Pat Riley. Now two straight times down the court. We've watched the Utah Jazz run this play, and it'll end up, you'll watch Mark Eaton step across and set a pick and roll. Now Magic Johnson is not getting any help, and Stark Stockton's coming off for the wide open jump shots. L.A. is going to have to make an adjustment with that play. Now Bob Hansen is the guy that really gets the abuse for this team physically and we see him trying to fight set a screen on Kareem and Kareem says well hello well, you know Bob Hansen has learned a lot as many of the Jazz from Jerry Sloan the assistant coach for Frank Layton he made his mark as a physical player with the Chicago Bulls years back and a lot of it there's Jerry in the middle with Scott Layton Jer and uh, he has really put this physicals Absolutely, and it, you know, that was his trademark, and the only number retired in Chicago Stadium is number four, Jerry Sloan. Worthy with a turnaround. He has 16 to lead the Lakers. Carl Malone also with 16 points, tops the Jazz. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Five-point Utah lead. Hansen gets inside, misses. Ivoroni tries to save it, and Scott prevented him from making any kind of a play. Good play by Byron Scott. Uh, there was a lot of contact there, and Jake O'Donnell could have called a, an offensive foul on Byron Scott, but he just felt that uh, that there wasn't enough contact to warrant a, a foul call. Stockton overplaying Cooper now. Worthy posting up against Ivoroni. Scott looking for him. Eight on the shot clock. They isolate him. Now Hanson helps. Open man. Scott goes for three. He faked the pass, and now the Jazz with John Stockton. Great in traffic. Scores over Cooper. 16 for Stockton. He has eight in each period. Matching their biggest lead, the Jazz up by seven, and Worthy gets the basket and draws the foul with a move that you remember before he hurt his knee. A slice, baseline, inside. But you still see Mark Eaton coming from the weak side, and he'll give that defensive help, but he's too late. As, as Worthy is able to get that two points and have a chance for the three-point play. Mark Eaton picks up his second personal foul. That is the second team foul on the Jazz in the period. 
Worthy completes the three-point play. You know, playoffs are adjustments. We see now in the game two and three, Stockton did not look for that pick and roll very much, and we didn't see Hanson posting up very much, but because of the defensive change, those are some adjustments for the Jazz. Michael Cooper and Eaton. And Cooper is complaining that Eaton is running him over, but the foul has been called against Michael Cooper of the Lakers, and now they're in the penalty. Detroit has opened up a 12-point lead. They're trying to make it 3-1 to one in that series at Chicago Stadium. You know what smooth is? You gotta stop and taste the high life. Smooth is the sensation of cracking open a cold Miller High Life. Smooth is the anticipation of that first mouthful hitting the back of your parched throat. Smooth is the feeling of a beer that goes down easy, never bitter. Stop and taste the high life. Smooth is knowing how good that first Miller High Life tasted and that it's time to enjoy another. This is Chevy's new Nova Twin Cam with a new 16-valve engine. What happens when you step on the gas? After import car owners add up all the standard features on a new Chevy Nova, then subtract the $1,000 cash they get when they buy one, they generally come to the following conclusion. aren't supposed to be in here. Hey, no problem, Honorable Dojo guy. But this is an important car. We're the auto lights. Guaranteed in any light. Sayonara. Okay. Take good care of your car, but forget your brakes. Might as well do this. Bendix brakes pass tougher tests than any law requires. So think about Bendix. The sooner, the better. The Jazz lead by four. They had a seven-point lead, and there's a familiar face to all of basketball fans and very popular here in the Utah area. Hot Rod Hundley, the radio broadcaster for the Jazz, came from New Orleans with the club 14 years, and one of the great characters and a former analyst on CBS as well, Billy. One great story. When he was at West Virginia, he helped recruit uh, Jerry West, who's the general manager of this Laker ball club, and they had just built a new facility at West Virginia and he said to Jerry West he said you know I put a down payment on this building and four years later Jerry West told him he said uh, by the way I paid off that building for you <laughs> <laughs> he sure did he sure did <laughs> magic on the bench right now with AC Green who didn't score he started today Eaton has been perfect from the line has 11 points worthy along with Kareem Scott Michael Thompson and Cooper 52 to 46, just under three minutes remaining in the first half. Lakers have tied it twice. They cut the lead to one on two occasions, but they've yet to come back and lead. Magic, after a brief press, comes back in, replacing Cooper. Thompson and Abdul-Jabbar, both in the lineup at the same time. Stop. Kareem gets the offensive rebound. Take on Eaton and a foul, and that'll be three on Mark Eaton. Yesterday, Frank Layton says, I don't worry about Eaton getting into foul trouble. He rarely does, but here he is. Well, he's going to go to Mel Turpin, I would think, with two, 238 left in this period. He can't afford to allow uh, Eaton to pick up his fourth foul in this first half. Eaton has 12 points and five rebounds, and there is Mel Turpin, certainly not spelt, to say the least. Well, I think he goes to the, the same clothing store that Frank Layton goes to. <laughs> so Frank Layton had the line. He said, you know, Pat Riley buys his clothes. I find mine. <laughs> he may have a point. Kareem is on the line. Jazz with 14 fouls. Abdul-Jabbar, one out of two. Five-point Utah lead. So Mel Turpin, who's been in action only five minutes in one game against the Lakers, Came over on a three-team trade, and I think they just want him to hold the fort for the remainder of this half. Malone. That's a way of doing it by having Malone hit from outside. He's got 18. I would expect, though, the last 220 of this period that Utah would try to use a little bit more of that clock up with Mark Eaton on the, uh, off, off with the foul trouble and Thurl Bailey also with three fouls. 
Three-point attempt, Scott. No good, Turpin gets it out to Stockton, overthrows him. And Stockton taps it away, and it's Utah ball. Great hustle by John Stockton. He went after that second effort. I don't know how many guys would do it on that instant. Like uh, the lost. thing he does, he does it for 48 minutes, too. The young man is just relentless. He just never appears to get tired out here on the court. And you look at him, he's, what, six feet tall, maybe 165 pounds. He shouldn't be playing in this game. He's too physical, but he's able to overcome it. Under two minutes to go. Hanson going to the hoop, has the shot blocked out of bounds. Still Utah ball, and the Jazz looking to take their biggest lead of the game. Hanson started hitting the first two shots he took in this game, and since then has been 0 for 7. Magic is on him. And they're going to call Turpin. No, Paul Malone sets the screen and sticks out an elbow and hits and hits uh, Kareem in the chest, and the foul is called. It's on Malone. You're right. His second. Yeah, he sticks that left elbow out. And that's the reason Mel Turpin was wide open. That's a real war zone inside the paint down low. And it's going to get worse. Turpin blocking Magic. And they're going to score the basket. Goaltending charged against Mel Turpin. So it's 54-49. You know, they're 54-49 or fight. <laughs> we got that kind of right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the thing, you know, Mel Turpin has come into this ball game, and he's been effective. You know, he goaltended that shot, but he's been aggressive out here on the boards it's, and trying to block some shots. It was really 54-40, the latitude and longitude. Yeah, I just kind of changed history a little bit. Well, well you're known to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Turpin misses the short shot. Michael Thompson. Gets the outlet pass with 1.15 to play. Stockton takes it away from him. Oh, that's why he's one of the leaders in the NBA in steals. Malone. Good boxing out by the Lakers, who can cut the lead to three with under a minute remaining in the first half. Lakers with 11 turnovers already, and now an illegal defense called against the Jazz. So each team has been called for three illegal defense violations, and the Lakers will shoot a technical here. Now, I wonder about that illegal defense. I think Craig Layton has got a point because Mel Turpin is standing in the lane right here. His man is standing on the other side of half court, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That is not an illegal defense. Good point. The free throw is made by Scott. It's a four-point game, and the Lakers still maintain possession. Is it hard to believe you look at the team the Jazz have out on the court right now, and they're winning, beating the world champions by four points? Turpin, Hanson, Ivoroni are three out of the five. Yeah. And John Stockton didn't think he'd start for this ball club this year. Stockton knocks it away from Kareem. He is a real pest to the L.A. Lakers. He now, here's the quick hands. He feeds Byron Scott to that spot on the floor and is able to pick up the steal. 44 seconds. There's the time remaining in the first half. Worthy going strong. Left-handed shot. Cuts the lead to two. Lakers trailing by two. And James Worthy with 21. Stockton is off the mark. And fights. Gets the own, his own miss. Uh, he's a player uh, every coach would love to have on, have on your team. And... You hate to play against him because he's a pest. He's a pest, and he is the ultimate point guard the way he's been playing in this series. He just sees the court beautifully, and he anticipates the... Oh! Kareem blocks Hanson's shot inside, and the Lakers can tie it up. Playing for the last shot. Six seconds to go. Scott inside. And will shoot two with four seconds to go, and the Lakers, who are down by seven, can earn a tie if Scott makes the free throw. Now here Stockton misses this shot. He has the court awareness to know what direction it's going off the rim and there he is just taking it off Michael Thompson's fingertips. Lakers have scored five in a row. Byron Scott has been their leading scorer in the season as well as the playoffs and this series. There's Eddie Hughes getting set to come in along with Ricky Green. A.C. Green and Michael Cooper check in for the Lakers as Scott Brings the L.A. Lakers with a one. What we see, though, is the importance of Mark Eaton to this ball club. They've just outscored the Lakers, uh, the, uh, excuse me, by the Jazz by six points so far and possibly seven points while he's been out. And Thurl Bailey also with three fouls. 
also on the bench. So they've got a lot of quick people who can shoot it with four seconds to play. Here's Kelly Trapuca, who has been an all-star and has scored 20 points or more, averaged in four of his five years with Detroit, now languishing on the bench here in Utah. He was acquired for Adrian Dantley. And a deal that aided the Pistons greatly. But here in Utah, they felt that they had to trade Adrian Dantley. He just didn't fit in with the direction that Frank Wade wanted this, wanted this team to go in. Ricky Green and Hughes off balance fires it up. And that is the end of the first half with the score. The Jazz 54, the Lakers 53. And Pat O'Brien will be back with the Prudential at the half after this message. On the other hand, I You're want wrong. to point out to no, you... I can't wrong. Democrats and Republicans have seldom agreed on anything. Wrong. Until now. After you. No, I insist after you. No, no, Each really party selected really Delta sir. as their official airline after for both the Democratic and after Republican after National after Conventions. You you. No, because please, Delta sir. flies more people more places than ever before. No, no, really whether you're Democrat, no, really, Republican, or undecided. Peanuts, anyone? Odious, contemptible. I'm speaking of offending in the personal grooming arena. When seeking maximum protection and a fresh new scent, one should grab new Right Guard Sports Stick from Gillette. Antiperspirant and deodorant. Anything less would be uncivilized. Hey, go ahead, you can hit. You'll never reach him. Watch out. We have a ball that goes farther than the competition. The top flight two. The longest balls. What are you going to do when you hear that Sprint's phone card saves you as much as 10, 20, even 30% versus AT&T? And that the phone card gives you the best possible sound quality, thanks to Sprint's exclusive nationwide digital fiber optic network. For starters, you'll want to call U.S. Sprint now and get your free phone card. And then maybe you'll want to cut AT&T out of the picture. Basketball's best will continue to roll. The NBA playoffs will continue to rock. And CBS Sports will bring it all home next weekend. CBS Sports presents The Prudential at the Half. Sponsored by The Prudential. Offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, and this is The Prudential at the Half from Control Room 43 in New York City. Our score in Salt Lake City the Jazz lead the Lakers 54 to 53. The Lakers made a little run there. They scored the last six points. Worthy has 21. Carl Malone has 18. Let's quickly get you up to date on the playoffs as they are unfolding right now. And there is another game underway. This one in Chicago. Game four between the Bulls and the Detroit Pistons. And Detroit leads 46 to 34 at the half. Now Detroit was looking to go up three to one in this series. This play almost looks like they practice it. But Isaiah goes down for the two. Doug Collins looking for an, act, uh, an answer, and usually he says, come on, Michael, get in the game. He offered a suggestion with a pass in traffic to Scottie Pippen for two. For Detroit, Lambeer follows his miss. As he goes inside, he misses, and he follows it with a tip in, and Detroit leads at the half at the Madhouse on Madison. Earlier today here on CBS, we brought you an Eastern Conference semifinal game between Boston and Atlanta. The Celtics went into the contest two games up on the Hawks, now, they are only one game up. That's the came out roaring today in the Omni. Spud Webb will replace the injured Doc Rivers. Got the offense in gear as he feeds Dominique Wilkins for another highlight. Boston, however, stayed close. Here, Robert Parrish gets the touch pass from Larry Bird. And Atlanta coach Mike Fratello sort of nods in admiration. Spud continued to push the Hawks offense. And now he gets Cliff Levingston. He takes the pass for the stuff, and Atlanta wins. Doc hurt his ankle, so I went in early, and I knew that we had to push it up on our nerves to get in our type of game, to get Dominique in the lane out one-on-one -on -one with someone, because you know, no one to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, so that's where we have to get him in the open court. 11 points, 12 assists for Spud today. Well, as you know, a lot of people are checking the stars these days for a peek into the future. We're not going to be left out. We'll have a look at next week's lottery as At the Half rolls on superstitiously after a commercial. And a word from your local station.
We go above and beyond just like you, above and beyond what we have to do. I'm a Prudential representative, and I help people review their life insurance needs, because I know how much the right life insurance means to me and my family. You take pride in your life, so do we. Going above and beyond is our policy. The rock, the Prudential, above. If she were a man, they'd have called her a daring adventurer. I've flown the Atlantic. But she was a woman ahead of her time. Stephanie Powers is Beryl Markham tonight. This is CBS. It's quiz time. What will you have? What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? I'm looking for a classic flavor. What do you have? Whoa! What do you have? I'm looking for a classic flavor. What do you have? On the next It's a Living, this could be a story for the Inquirer. I know more about these girls than any man alive. We're like this. What are you doing in here, earwax? The girls reveal what they like best about their jobs. I'll have to say the love and the friendship with the other girls. Oh, shut, shut up, Amy. But not everyone's willing to spill their guts about Nancy. Is she really a pain in the butt? The duck just flew down and gave you $100. Don't miss It's a Living, Sunday nights at 11 on KX4 Television. Silva, KX4 Sports. Welcome back to the Prudential at the half. You're in the Salt Palace there, and could the Utah Jazz be performing the upset of the playoffs? They lead the Lakers 54 to 53 at the half. Well, next Saturday, we'll bring you the NBA draft lottery during halftime of our 3.30 game, and what will the luck of the draw bring? For answers, we turn to our CBS Sports soothsayer sleuth, Bill Raftery. Bill Raftery. Here then is Raft at the half. I'll get it out. The brightest star of this NBA draft lottery is Danny Manning. And a spin of the barrel will determine which one of six teams wins the lucky star. This year, the lottery moves to an eerie location, the Museum of Natural History in New York. Among these relics, Lady Luck may bless yet another franchise. With a fortune like Manning at stake, NBA teams are looking for any edge they can get in predicting their lottery chances. I think I'll hold on to this fortune cookie. Since the harmonic convergence, we've decided to switch over to uh, astrology. I'm going to do it. It's pray a lot. I'll be praying every day, every night. The Phoenix Suns decided they would try to read tea leaves. Maybe you could look into the cup and tell us who will the Phoenix Suns come up with in this year's lottery. The 16th century prophet Nostradamus, not known for his ability to stick the jumper, forecast turbulence in Los Angeles this week. That didn't come to pass, but of course, he didn't know the Clippers, who've been a revelation all their own. Elgin Nostradamus predicted a monumental happening in Los Angeles this week. That's the same guy who said we would win 40 games this season. Uh, I think what he's talking about, that we're going to pick number one and number two in the lottery. Predictions aside, we decided to go high-tech, so it was off to Silicon Valley for a more programmed decision. Who's going to win the lottery? Phoenix. Phoenix? How about Golden State? Golden State. That does not compute. That does not compute. Yes, this week, forecast fever is running amok. We decided to take a gaze at the stars ourselves and consult a real authority. Nancy, I must go. Relax. Say, you look familiar. Did you play for me? The Swami only makes right decisions. I hope I didn't interrupt your work. Could you tell me who's going to win the lottery next Saturday? Not Sacramento. The answer is... Raisa, how are things at the Kremlin? International business. We're certainly not getting anywhere here. By the way, remember that fortune cookie? Maybe we've got the answer. Here, you open it. 
All right, Raph, thank you. I'll help you out here. I'll open this thing up. Raph, where'd you buy these? These are four years old. This says the Knicks get the number one pick. <laughs> Lunchtime, everybody. Well, the fortunes of Carl Malone have been unfolding before our very eyes. Utah's all-star is called the mailman, but he might well also be called the zookeeper, based on a hobby that began at a tender age. Well, Mom used to hang clothes on the clothesline all the time, and we used to get frogs, snakes, and everything, and put them in plastic bags and hang them on the line for my mom just to see her, I guess, right away from the line. Carl Malone has grown up now, sort of, still has that crawdad from Louisiana. His favorite dog, Jasmine, among other pets, the mailman is always shopping for more friends. Hi, Carl. How you doing? All right. You make it so well. When do you think I can get him? Oh, you like him this afternoon, you can have him this afternoon, or uh, whatever works into your schedule. I guess they'll just roll me, huh? I've been over to his house, and um, you have to be careful where you sit, you know, because you don't know what's going to come uh, crawling along the floor or uh, jumping out of the fish tank. I'm not afraid of his pets. You know, uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, and we always had pets all over the house. Some we wanted, and some we didn't. <laughs> he's got his own regular zoo. In fact, we're starting to compare him to Michael Jackson. Before long, he's going to probably have a tiger and an ape or something like that in his backyard. I guess if I get a tiger cub, it would probably be some howling and things like that. And I don't think I got an elephant stalled around here yet, but you never know. <laughs> the elephant? I wonder if he'll travel with that. Well, we know a couple of guys who are willing to work for peanuts. It's time for Dick and Billy. I'm Pat O'Brien. Thank you for joining us on the Prudential at the Half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of the 1988 NBA playoffs has been sponsored by Chrysler. Chrysler believes a luxury car should be a great driving car. At Chrysler, we're driving to be the best. The U.S. Army, where you get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Spalding, makers of top flight, the longest balls. Here's to the winners, those who move mountains. Here's to the miracles they make us see. Holiday Inn welcomes you, the people who know that winning at life is working hard at it and living it fully day after day. Here's to the winners, all of us can be. Holiday Inn salutes you. Here's to the winners. We're on your way. Compared to the piece-together frame of a typical lawn and garden tractor, the frame of a John Deere is a single mass of welded steel. And because it isn't made of pieces, it doesn't go to pieces. Uh, the money that you spent on calls to your mother last month, you, you could have gone to visit her. Okay, dear. I'll leave tomorrow. Northwest can make flying cheaper than talking. Just call us now and take advantage of our new lower fares. At BASF, we believe to see in new ways, you need to see with more than one pair of eyes. Synchronize your energies with the people down the hall and around the world. Because the more ideas you can build on, the higher we can all reach. From agribusiness to healthcare, we're creating new worlds by seeing in new ways. BASF, the spirit of innovation. I know some kids say I'm cool. I can handle drugs. I can take them or leave them. I'm telling you, they can't. No one has been able to handle drugs. No one. Drugs ruin people's lives and hurt everyone around them. There's only one answer. Don't even try drugs. No matter how you say it, say no. Don't foul out with drugs. Sorry. It's 54 to 53. The Utah Jazz lead the LA Lakers in this critical game for the Western semifinal. The story right here is the fact that Mark Eaton, the big giant in the middle for the Utah Jazz, is hampered with three personal fouls. And we'll see what the Lakers will do as far as that big defensive giant goes in the second half. Meanwhile, Billy Cunningham had a chance to talk to Lakers coach Pat Riley and asked him if he was pleased with the first half performance. So I think our game is definitely coming. We got out more on the break than we ever have. We just have to, and we have in this series, we have to convert and be a little stronger with the basketball taken into the basket. I'm pretty confident in the second half. Hey, good luck in the second half, Patrick. All right, what about Eaton in the foul trouble here? Uh, I 
I guarantee you the Lakers will go right at Mark Eaton. They'll try to get the ball into Jabbar and try to have him take it strong to the basket trying to pick up that fourth foul. What about the game generally? It's 54-53. Other than the foul trouble, how do you see it? Well, I think that the Lakers have come out and said that, hey, we're, we're back in playing this type of ball game we'd like to play. But this Utah team has responded so beautifully. The big factor is that they've been able to pound the offensive glass, and they've been very effective. Looking at the statistics, uh, the Lakers shooting 53%. It's a lot better than the Jazz had given up, and they're doing a fine defensive job again. Kareem, four of six. Lakers have turned it over 11 times. And Utah has the fast break edge, thanks to John Stockton. Lakers led by three early. Their last lead was 13 to 12. Utah several times took five-point leads. Lakers tied it, and then the seven-point lead has been the biggest in the ballgame. And the last one was with 223 to go. Eaton comes in and misses the stuff for the first play as we get underway in the second half. Byron Scott, Magic Johnson, Green, Worthy, and Kareem. Scott. And Eaton. Loose ball out of bounds. It's still Lakers' possession. Leading scorer is James Worthy as 21 for the Lakers. Carl Malone, 18 for the Jazz. Also with three personal fouls is Thurl Bailey, who the Jazz count on for a lot of points off the bench. So they have a lot of problems. It's, this was the problem that the Lakers had in game three, having Worthy, Jabbar, several players in foul trouble. Worthy posting up against Thurl Bailey, who has three fouls. He's starting. Kareem tries to save it. Stockton knocks it out of bounds. Five seconds for the Lakers to get off a shot. L.A. scored the last six points of the first half to come within one. And looking for their first lead since 640 of the first period. Kareem. Magic over Eaton there. Ball and a foul call against the Lakers. No, the 24-second clock expired. They had five seconds, didn't get it off in time. <laughs> it's amazing what the presence of Mark Eaton does to a team. You saw Magic Johnson beat his man and throw the ball over the rim, trying to get that shot up just because Mark Eaton was there and had a hand up. John Stockton and Bob Hansen at guard. Up front, it's Eaton, Carl Malone, and Thurl Bailey. They get it low to Malone, the leading scorer for the Jazz. Hansen wide open for three. He's got it. Only the third three-point basket for the Jazz in the series. Hansen has two, and Stockton has one. Well, it was Stockton making that penetration and finding Hansen wide open for that three-pointer. Magic in the paint. Tries to pass it, and Eaton got a hand on it. Hansen ahead of the field. And it's blocked. And they're going to count the basket. Scott called for goaltending as he trapped the ball. Credit to Bob Hansen here. Now here's Byron Scott getting back defensively. Now, did he trap the ball against the basket? Backboard. Yes, he did. And that's a good call by Dick Pavetta. Now, is Magic penetrating? And there's Mark Eaton right in the middle of the lane. I guess it's like trying to look over, a, a, well, a building, obviously, but with his hands extended, he's got to be close to 10 feet tall. And there was a foul as well committed by Byron Scott, so Bob Hansen, with a chance for a three-point play, he came out of Iowa five years ago. Frank Layden was looking at tapes of Russell Cross of Purdue. He says, every time we looked at a tape of Cross, they were playing Iowa, and he says, who's that kid chasing after loose balls? It was Bob Hansen. They're diving into the stands. He said, let's get that guy. <laughs> He's glad he did. Magic hits. Utah had scored the first six points of the quarter before Magic Johnson hit the jumper, and Utah up by five. This is game four. If the Jazz win, they'll have a commanding three-to-one lead. The Lakers are looking to even the series at two games apiece. Malone, soft turnaround, good defense by Green that time, and here's Magic. Urban Johnson, he's playing a much-improved game in this one. Going up and foul committed by Hansen. But do you notice a lack of the kind of quickness we've seen from Magic in the past? Yeah, and, and I'm sure that groin injury is a problem. He said he really has a problem when he gets into the lane area and he wants to explode to the basket. That extension really pulls in his groin area, and he just can't do it. Bob Hansen with his three pers third personal foul. So Hansen, Bailey, and Eaton all with three as Magic misses the first. Now, I wouldn't be surprised that Frank Layden, if this foul problem continues for his ball club, has to make even a more of an adjustment defensively because this team only goes five, six deep maximum, 
and he just cannot allow these players to be in serious foul trouble going into the fourth period. They won in game three, but they barely hung on. Thurl Bailey hits a jumper. Bailey, with six points in the game, did not score in the first period. Malone's 18 leads. Stockton right behind with 16. Six-point lead. Worthy with a fake, and Stockton reaches in and knocks it away. Worthy tried to get it to Kareem, and Stockton ever alert. Hanson with another three. Timeout, Lakers. The biggest lead of the game right now by the Utah Jazz, and here's how they got it. And look at Stockton penetrating and finding Hanson wide open for this three-point basket. His second in this period. You gotta stop and taste the high life. Take a hard-earned break every now and again. Stop and taste the high life. Kick back and drink it in. Spend some time just finding out what you're working for. Miller High Life, brewed to be smooth, never bitter. Takes time to make, time to enjoy. Stop and taste the high life. Take the high Miller High Life. This long row of junkers is not too tough a road for the famous Ford Bigfoot. But what about a regular Ford 4x4 carrying a Chevy? Yes, the tough advanced Ford makes it. Ford, the best-selling pickup in America for the 11th straight year. Hey, go ahead, you can hit. He'll never reach him. Watch out. We have a ball that goes farther than the competition. The top flight, too. The longest balls. Okay, okay, so you love your car. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not going inside yet. The tires. The tires. The four round things underneath. There you go. Now, see that armor all protected? Wipe some of that stuff on the tires and bumpers. Okay, now get in the car and do the dash and the seats. And you, you can do this. This is not rocket science. Now, look, look at your car. Now go in the house and tell them how hard you worked. Go ahead. They don't know about armor all. They'll buy it. Thursday. God will heal you, Wesley. Was it an act of faith or an act of murder? They killed him! Promised a miracle based on a true story. Thursday. CBS Sports coverage of the 1988 NBA playoffs is sponsored by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. Armor All Protectant. It protects and beautifies every time you wash your car. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? A nine-point lead by the Utah Jazz, and this place is having a celebration here. CBS Sports coverage of the NBA playoffs and a happening here at the Saul Palace. The Jazz have outscored the Lakers 11-3 here in this third period. Bobby Hansen has nine of those 11 points. Magic Johnson has scored all three L.A. points. The key in this third period is the Jazz have come out and said to the Lakers, you are not going to get anything inside. They've either they've created three turnovers when the Lakers have got into the lane area. And Eden still in there with three personal fouls. Byron Scott coming off the screen. Loose ball. Hanson. Eden getting into the play with 8.45 remaining. Malone posting up Worthy. Kareem the rebound. Eaton sure not to commit a silly foul there. You know the Lakers are going to make several runs in this game before it's over. Worthy with a spin move. Magic. And Bailey finally has it for Utah. Again, it's Mark Eaton. Jazz like to use a lot of their clock. They don't want quick shots and have Eaton not get back defensively. That's a very important part of their overall format. Six on the shot clock, and the ball bounces past Eaton. Turnover, L.A. ball. Lakers are only one for seven shooting here in this third period. 
Want to welcome the viewers who have been watching the Detroit-Chicago Game 3. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham here at the Salt Palace. The biggest game of the year for the Lakers as they trail by nine. In this third period, Kareem hits a sky hook to make it seven. But the Lakers are trying to avoid falling behind three games to one in this best of seven series. You remember two years ago, the Houston Rockets won four straight against the Lakers after losing the first. Stockton tried to force it there, one of the few times he's done that. Lakers coming back. Magic basket counts and a foul as he changed hands beautifully. You go into his left hand, and that's something that the Lakers have not done starting this second half, looking to push the ball. And here's Magic at his best, pushing it, reading the defense, taking it all the way to the hole and picking up the foul. And the foul is against Bob Hansen. That's his fourth personal foul. A sidelight to this game is the fact that Mark Eaton, who has really been tremendous inside defensively for the Jazz, changing everyone's shot, is playing with three personal fouls. The leading scorers, Worthy has 21 to lead the Lakers, and Malone, with 18, heads the Jazz. Seven twenty-three remaining in the third period. Ta attack. Well, first you try to make yourself extremely visible to the guy who rebounded, whether it's uh, uh, going down and getting it right out of his hands or getting to an open spot out there on the elbow. Um, after that point, you just push it up as fast as you can, try to get it to the other elbow, and, and uh, kind of try to take a, a consensus of what's going on on the court while you're running. And, and uh, you see who's filling the lanes, you kind of get a mental picture, and then after that, it's, uh, it's just timing and waiting for people to get open or waiting for somebody to go through. And uh, then you just try to give it to a guy in full stride and let him take it to the hole strong. And we know that man going strong is usually Carl Malone. And so far in this third period, he has not been a factor for the Utah Jazz. And I would expect they try to get him involved in the offense right here after this timeout. Stockton has outscored Magic 16 to 15, has more assists and more rebounds, four to nothing. Magic still has no rebounds. He didn't have any in game three. And I just have to feel that he is hurting. Malone, you are right. They wanted to get it to him, but the Laker defense clamped down, trailing by four. L.A. trying to cut it to two. Scott goes in. And Malone gets it to Stockton. It's a three-on-one break, and Carl Malone over Kareem for the basket. <laughs> he either goes through you or over you, and he did both of those things to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 20 points for Malone after he missed his first three shots in this third period. And Worthy, who has 21, has not hit any shots yet in the third. And a The Laker defense clamped down, trailing by four. L.A. trying to cut it to two. Scott goes in. And Malone gets it to Stockton. It's a three-on-one break, and Carl Malone over Kareem for the basket. <laughs> he either goes through you or over you, and he did both of those things to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 20 points for Malone after he missed his first three shots in this third period. And Worthy, who has 21, has not hit any shots yet in the third, and a foul. That's the fourth on Mark Eaton. They went right at him, as Pat Riley told you he would, and Mark Eaton now with four fouls. And Frank Layden's going to have to make a decision. He stays in the game right here. Wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers continue to go at him. And they'll have to look to double-team more down inside. Good feed from Kareem to Magic Johnson driving, and it's a four-point affair. Magic with 17 points. Bart Kofo to come in for Hansen, who went out with four fouls. So it's Stockton and Kofo in the backcourt. Bailey, Malone, and Eaton playing with four fouls up front. Bailey hits another one. High arcing jumper. He's so tough to match up with at 6'11 and hits outside. Yeah, and what Pat Riley has to be upset with James Worthy because he doesn't want him to be able to shoot that shot. Speaking of Worthy, he gets his first points of the third period and still leads the Lakers with 23. What he wants you to do defensively against Bailey is get up on his right shoulder and force him to drive to his left and take away the jump shot. And the last two times, Worthy has not done that. Stockton has a pick from Eaton. No roll. No vote on the baseline. Nothing doing. Steal by Worthy into the hands of Scott. Back defending is Bailey against Worthy. Worthy with a basket. Two-point game. 69-67, and Worthy has hit two in a row. 
And a timeout called by Frank Layton, a 22nd timeout. As the Lakers have stormed back, they were down by nine and now trail by two points. Next weekend, the Colonial National Invitation Golf Tournament. The third and fourth round, Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, we'll precede our NBA playoff action. And on Sunday, we'll follow. So our NBA schedule, 3.30 Eastern next Saturday and next Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern time. And the lottery on Saturday, Patrick Ewing, Brad Doherty, David Robinson have been the last three number one lottery picks. We won't find out who will be the number one pick, although you can probably guess it'll be Danny Manning, Billy, but we'll find out which team will have number one. Well, I would be completely shocked if, <laughs> if it wasn't Danny Manning with the season that he had for Kansas. That's now, right, what the Lakers have done, and they've scored six in a row, Bill. Right now, they need to get something going at the offensive end of the court, Utah, and that man is Carl Malone. Bailey misses his first shot after hissing, hitting three, and it's a chance for the Lakers to tie it up. Bailey with three fouls defending. Now we see the lineup change. We have Mark Ivoroni in there. There's a big lineup in there for the Lakers. Thompson ties it up with a baseline shot. So it's Thompson, Magic, Worthy and Kareem Bailey misses and the rebound Scott and the Lakers and the ball taken away Scott got careless Carl Malone goes up and an offensive foul called against Malone Michael Thompson had possession position I should say according to Dick Pavetta and he is called for his third foul well we'll see Dick if he did have that position now we see Malone making the steal, finding Stockton. Yep, he had excellent position. Michael Thompson was in right in the perfect position. All three fouls by Carl Malone are on the offensive end. And Kareem gives the Lakers their first lead since 13 to 12 at 640 in the first period. They're up by two. It must be a strange feeling for Kareem. All of a sudden he can see daylight and not Mark Eaton there playing him defensively. Kareem has 14 points held to six in the last game and a new 24 second clock as Scott kicks it away yeah it's really something watching the Lakers when their defense starts clicking everything falls into place and that's what we've seen the last few minutes and all of the foul troubles are on the shoulders of the Utah Jazz the home team Stockton goes in and a foul it'll be only the second team foul against the Lakers John Stockton will go to the line, and the personal foul is against Magic Johnson, his second. Now, offensively, Utah Jazz, they'll look to run their break when they have an easy opportunity at the other end. What they'll do with the foul problems that they have, you're going to see them use that 24-second clock. There'll be a lot of shots coming from the Jazz with maybe five seconds left on the 24-second clock. Stockton has 18 points. The Lakers were ice cold starting this period. They were three for ten, but have hit their last five shots and took the lead briefly in a tie game. Kofod is guarding Johnson, spreading out the offense through the Lakers. Magic posting up against Kofod. Ivoroni helps, so does Stockton. Magic goes up and draws the foul. He played it very well against tough harassing defensive now we see now that the, the Lakers have just taken control of this ball game they're showing more patience going into the going inside either the dream or the magic and the big factor though they're getting everybody involved offensively because they're running we've seen James Worthy out in the fast break we've seen Byron Scott and we've also seen magic there magic has hit eight out of nine from the line and don't forget the Laker defense has tightened the screws considerably here in the last few minutes. Oh, that's the key to this ball club. You know, I just believe when this Laker team is active, when they're double teaming down and they're rotating defensively aggress aggressively, they can play the best defensive defense in the NBA. Now the Jazz are looking to tie the game. Michael Thompson trying to deny Malone. Loose ball in the hands of Scott. Another turnover and a Utah foul. John Stockton is shaken up. For the moment, he's a tough kid, though. Stockton's foul is his second. 
but the Jazz are in the penalty, and now, the Lakers will shoot. Now, Dick, the key we were talking about, look at Worthy now, taking away the jump shot. What is he forcing Bailey to do? Drive to his left, and that's what created the turnover. Byron Scott will be shooting, and a chance to give the Lakers their biggest lead of the game. They were up by three very early, and now can establish a four-point advantage. You know, at the end of the second period, when Eaton had to go to the sideline, the Lakers ran off six points and come back. And now we see Eaton on the bench again, and we see the spurt that the Lakers are able to take with him sitting on the sideline. And for a while, Eaton had avoided that fourth foul as the Jazz came on strong to open up a nine-point lead. But look how quickly the Lakers have come back. And probably the next three minutes of this period could tell a lot of the fate of this series. He just changes, changes the personality of this ball club. All of a sudden, they're a team that you can attack in the middle. Kofold, rebound Malone, Walloway, crash the boards, Kofold goes up and feeds Bailey, who's fouled and will shoot. So the Utah Jazz pounding the offensive glass and getting several chances, and Bailey will be on the line. Well, right now, Frank Layden is just hoping his team can hang in there so we can get into the fourth period, period and be close and then bring Eaton into the ballgame. Lakers have been on a 14-4 run while Eaton has been uh, on the sidelines. Foul was on Michael Thompson, his second, and the team's third. Thurl Bailey has scored during the year 41 points and 38 points in games coming off the bench. Phenomenal. Yeah, he just appears to be more comfortable as a player coming off the bench rather than starting, and statistically, it really proves out that, that is, that's a fact. Detroit rolling over the Chicago Bulls by 17. Trying to establish a 3-1 lead. The Lakers are looking to tie this best of seven series at two apiece and turn it into a best of three and get that home court advantage back again. Kareem Skyhook. Knocked away by Kofo, but right into the hands of the Lakers. And it's tipped away off of Kofo, so the Lakers have it with 2.36 to go in a new clock. You know, Bart Kofo said that what is so a writer asked him what he thought of the playoffs and what did it mean to him? And he said, what it means if I play pretty well, maybe I can have a job right here with the Utah Jazz next year. They're getting the 24 second clock down to what it should be. What do you think it'll end up at? Uh, I'm going <laughs> to take 19. What are you going to take? I was thinking of 25, but that wouldn't work. 20, no, <laughs> I, I guess not. Wait, it's back to 24. Let's see. Uh, I'll take uh, 14. Reminds you of the bakery when you were in Brooklyn, right? When you had to take a, a check. Yeah. <laughs> Old days in Brooklyn. A lot of things happened there, though. A lull in the action right now as they work on the clock. Amazing how all of a sudden everything stopped still in the drama. Excuse me, uh, it's amazing the way this game all of a sudden stops with so much hanging in the balance. The world champions facing a 3-1 deficit if they don't win this game. They've come back to take a two-point lead in a tremendously tense, taut duel, and now all of a sudden everyone is, you know, it's stopped motion here. And what is the most critical game of the year for the Lakers? Yeah, it, it's come to a hush. It, 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 I think players like Malone have not sat down, and Stockton has only been out for a minute or two, so this breather might be helpful to them. The last Utah basket was at 6.08. We have 2.36 remaining. They've had only four free throws since. Well, looking at the history, when the Lakers have been trailing 2-1, to one, that's not counting mini-series situations, best of three. They have lost five times. They're going to go manual now. They've shut off the 24-second clock. So... One clock works and one doesn't, and so uh, that's not fair. Well, right now, there's approximately eight seconds left on the 24-second clock, so they better get this shot up quickly. I guess the official told us wrong. Scott misses a three. Rebound Worthy. Fake swoop basket, big basket by James Worthy. And a Laker lead of four. And a foul. The basket's going to count, and a foul is called. And it's against the Lakers. Turpin comes into the ball game, replacing Ivoroni. So Turpin, 
Malone and Thurl Bailey make the front court now for Utah. We'll have to clarify what that foul, if any, was called by Jake O'Donnell. I think it was on Kareem hitting, hitting a. Well, you watch Kareem there with the left elbow, you know, against Malone, just pushing. Oh, that's just a touch foul. And his third personal foul. Lakers have regained the rebounding edge. Anyone who thinks that the Lakers are strictly a Showtime finesse team, take a look at what they're doing here because they're playing a grinded out style, physical at every position. And that's what Pat Riley was hoping for today, a nasty Laker ball club on for this call game because they didn't want to be down 3-1. Aaron pass by Kofo, Scott inside, and the Jazz gave the Lakers two points. And it's a six-point lead. The Lakers with their biggest lead of the game with 150 to play. And now that poise that the Jazz had shown starting to unravel just a bit here. Let's see if they can regain it. Yeah, it looks like they've lost all confidence when Mark Eaton goes to the bench. Bailey misses a three. Turpin clears. Loose ball. Kofod out there. Hansen is on the bench with four fouls. And the basket counts in a foul by Carl Malone. And it seems for Frank Layton just in the nick of time. Oh, but it, because the Lakers, you had that feeling sitting here watching the game that they were on the verge to just blow this Utah team out of this building. Foul is on Thompson, his fourth. So he's picked up three quick ones, Michael Thompson. He has four fouls. And Carl Malone is on the line. Eaton getting a good rest with four fouls here. And Hanson's four fouls have also hurt the Jazz. Absolutely, and, and the thing now, Pat Riley has a decision to make with Kareem with three and Thompson with four, because if Kareem picks up the fourth, uh, that create, can create some problems because Thompson is the backup center as well as the backup uh, strong forward. 23 for Malone, Bill Burtka over at the scorer's table for the moment. Burtka has been Riley's assistant, but you know, he was part of the beginnings of the Utah Jazz franchise, and he Hales from lives in Santa Barbara, California, where the jazz ownership was, and he really put this whole thing together. Well, he was the first man in 1974 to get involved with the Utah, well, at that time, the New Orleans Jazz. The illegal defense called against the Jazz, and the Lakers will shoot it. Three-point lead for the Lakers, and Scott will be on the line. A.C. Green will check in. 71-55 Detroit. Former Utah Jazz, Adrian Dantley, having a big game. The Denver Nuggets and the Dallas Mavericks will play game number four tonight at Dallas. Oh, when have we seen in a big game two coaches with the smiles on their face lately, Lates and Riley? Well, you know, Frank had one a good one line of four. <laughs> You see what Lake did then after that Riley took out his comb and combed his hair. <laughs> that is great. Uh, uh, a light moment in uh, a tense game. Scott Stockton loses his footing. Scott misses Magic Johnson the offensive rebound. He finds Green. Great no-look pass by Magic Johnson. And the first basket for A.C. Green. And so the Lakers getting the offensive boards again. That's what they did in the first three. Well, since Mark Eaton has gone out of the game, the Lakers have dominated this game at both ends of the court. 45 seconds to go in the period. Thurl Bailey misses Kareem the rebound. 40 seconds to go. Lead pass to Green. Blocked by Thurl Bailey. Crowd thought he had traveled first. Now the Jazz will try to cut it to four. They led by as many as nine here in this third period. And they lost it. The feed into Malone knocked away by the Lakers. Good defense once more. This is, this is where they need John Stockton to settle this team down and show the leadership quality that he has because they're just not handling the ball well. They're not getting good shots. And they're rushing their offense, which they weren't doing earlier. Magic with five seconds on the clock. Worthy steals it away, and it's tipped in by A.C. Green. And the Lakers have their biggest lead of the game with one second to go, and that'll do it as the Lakers have swiped this game away to this point. That's the end of the third period, and we'll return to the Salt Palace after this message and a word from your local station. I'm sure Chuck Daly's got to be ecstatic. 
Kelly Trapilka makes his first appearance of the game, replacing Bob Hansen. What's happened today is that the Utah Jazz, at one point in the third period, had a nine-point lead, but foul trouble to Mark Eaton keyed the Lakers, and they took the game away at both ends the rest of the way. And that's the key. Once he went out, even when Mark Eaton came back, the Lakers were in such a good flow offensively. They had picked up their intensity defensively, and they're playing what you would consider Laker basketball, what made them world champions. Lakers outscored the Jazz 23-9 with Eaton on the bench. Michael Thompson gets the bucket. 113 to 97 with 139 to play. Four men in double figures for the Lakers in all with 20 or more points led by Worthy with 29. Carl Malone's 28 leads the Jazz. Trapuca misses and Green the rebound. A lot of questions as Pat Riley said. A lot of gloom and doom around the Lakers. Trailing 2 to 1 having to play again on the road. But as you said. That's why they're the world champs. Yeah, and yesterday, Pat Riley had planned for a practice, decided, no, all we need is a meeting to make sure we're all on the same page. And, uh, today, everyone's on the same page. Thompson keeps it alive on a new clock for the Lakers. So the Lakers, for Pat Riley, said it's a matter of getting even. They're going to return and regain the home court edge, and now it'll be a best of three series, and L.A. has two games in the forum of the three. Frank Layden still believes, even before this game, that this was going to be a seven-game series. Eddie Hughes in action for the second time today. The little point guard from Chicago who's come on and played in some tough games. Series will continue Tuesday at the Forum. And Thursday, back here at Utah, if necessary, game seven, Saturday at the Forum. Michael Thompson is fouled out of the game for the Lakers. But here's the story in the West. This series is all tied at 2-2. The Denver Nuggets, after winning in Dallas last night, take their 2-1 lead in to Reunion Arena tonight in game number four in that series. In the East, the Atlanta Hawks beat the Boston Celtics earlier today. And the Detroit Pistons won. The Detroit leads 3-1. Interesting. Looking ahead to a possible Detroit-Boston matchup, if Atlanta continues to cause Boston troubles by winning the next home game tomorrow, and Detroit can polish off Chicago, they could get some rest and get ready for that opener in Boston Garden. That's right, and they haven't had any success in the Boston Garden. They have to do something defensively if they do play Boston. You, you know, this Atlanta ball club, you, things can happen. We saw Robert Paris twist an ankle. If something like that happens to a Larry Bird, you know, Atlanta might win that series. You just don't know in the playoffs. So if they get that time to prepare, if they do play the Celtics, to, uh, they, to disrupt the set offense of the Celtics, they'll have a chance. Carl Malone goes out of the game to cheers. He scored 29 points. Hughes and Ivoroni gets the bucket. Just a matter of time, and they're playing out the last 15 seconds. But the Lakers should feel very good about themselves, Billy. Not too good, though. If they feel too good, they're going to be back in the same spot they had themselves in yesterday, being down in this series against Utah. They have to be mentally ready to play every night. Spoken like a coach who knows really the realities of playoff, huh? The game is over, and the L.A. Lakers have even the best of seven Western semifinal, beating the Jazz in their den at the Salt Palace as Frank Layden and Pat Riley engage each other for the moment the final score 113 to 100 the lakers win and our miller light player of the game is kareem abdul jabbar after being held to just six points and shooting 30 percent in the last two games kareem today scored 21 points and hit nine of four